So I don't need to see this anymore, this uh, level set, so I can just hide it in the viewport, just go H. Right, so the first thing I need to do is convert this volume into a field. So I want a voxel field, which converts volumes into fields. So I take the volume, put it into volume. Um, don't need to do anything in there because I want a voxel sign distance field. Uh, I can leave everything else as that. Um, and let's just unhide him a bit so we get a bit of visual. Um, so to visualize these fields, we've got a couple of scopes we can look at. Um, I'm going to do this one. So uh, let's do a scalar. Oops. Scalar field scope. And I'm going to do a vector field scope. So two different types of scopes to look at fields, scalar and vector. Um, a voxel field, if you mouse over the output, you can see down written at the bottom there, it says it's a scalar field. So if I put that into there. And I'm not going to use outputs, I'm going to use terminals, which allows you to have different outputs going into Maya. Final one that goes to render, proxy for just work for the viewport so you can work along and a diagnostic so you can look at things like scopes um, and what's good about these you can turn them on and off so I can plug this in now Oops. and there we go we get this that's basically the field scope and if I wanted to I could turn that off and on so I'm just going to go into the settings of this um, at the moment the minimum bounds is 0, uh, 10, minus 10, so I'm going to put that to 0 at the bottom and put that up to 20 and that should cover our guy and just make these points a lot smaller so we sort of get something that makes sense in the viewport even smaller right, so make that 21 or 25 there we go, so what this field is is basically it's a distance field from the surface um, if I turned up the amount of divisions you might be able to see it better so so scalars are just single numbers um, so at the surface these points get smaller so saying they're a smaller number so when they hit the very surface they're at zero and as they get further away they get bigger and bigger so it's like a distance zero to number 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 going away um, so that's what that is, let's turn that off. Um, and I'm going to make a, a, a fractal turbulence field, fractal turbulence field, like that. Um, and that, if I plug that into our vector field, and I'll make another terminal for that one. Diagnostic. You can see what that is. Um, you can zoom in a bit and change this from. These are just directions at the moment. I want to see them as flow lines. Um, and let's just move those up again as well. So put that at zero and that's 22. Oops, not 200, 22. So these are noise turbulence velocities in the in the scene and if I go to the turbulence field and I crank them up a bit you'll see them a bit they get longer because they've got more uh, velocity on them so you can see there's sort of all these like di directions of uh, velocities so if I turn that down to 10 gets a slightly viewport better viewport view um, so they're all they sort of taper off to a point, so that's going in that direction, that one's going in that direction. So there are all these sort of whirling velocities. Right, so with these two, I want to do uh, a cross product of them both, which will give me a right angle. Um, if I just plug this mesh in, actually. So there we go, you can see him coming off the surface. The, all these velocities are coming off this surface now because I've used him as a probe geometry. So you can see the whirling. So I've emitted particles off him now using this as a force. 
that we're sort of going off there and in directions like that. Right, so let's make a, this is a, um, a scalar field and this is a vector field. I need to convert this to a vector field um, so I can do some a little mathematical operation on them uh, called a cross product. So if I go tab, I want a field that's called a gradient. And if we look at the info of that, it says returns a field whose values are a gradient of the input scalar field. The gradient of the blah, 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 is a vector field, the direction and the length of the vectors that represent the direction and the rate, the greatest increase of the scalar field in any position. So if I do that, plug that in, and then I plug that into there, you can see basically these are now velocities that are coming off this character. This character. So if I animated the shoot particles off this, they would be shooting off the surface, a bit like you were just coming off the normals. Um, these are slightly different because when they sort of meet, they sort of flow through each other. You can sort of see them there starting to sort of intertwine a bit. So they are different to normals, so they're flow lines. Right, so this one I don't need to convert because it's already a vector. So what I want to do is do a cross product of these, which will give me the right angle of the two. Um, two vectors um, on the points of the surface. Not 100%. Uh, I understand the maths, but I'm not, uh, you know, clear on them 100%. So I'm sort of. I sound a bit vague. It's because that's the limit of my maths. But anyway, so um, we're going to do a cross product. So I'm going to cross, and I want the turbulence field to be the first one. And I want the gradient of this one to be the second one. So now when we plug that into our vector field, we get this. So if I maybe just, just deselect them. So we're now getting these velocities, but they're moving over the surface of the uh, character. Like that. And if I go in there and play around with these, you'll get this, you know, slightly more and if I up the magnitude you can see they get sort of more intense um, we'll put that down to point 0.1 you just sort of get this flow lines um, so at the moment because the gradient is basically a gradient field of a voxel is a sort of like they're going uphill or downhill or uphill um, I won't get too bogged down in that actually um, because I don't really understand the maths so I'm not going to start pretending I do um, so we've got the cross product I mean you see they're going over the surface but at the moment they are all going to the points you can see this sort of all moving if I make this a bit and maybe turn that down a bit more maybe put that to point one yeah you can sort of see it there so they're all, these blue bits are where they're sort of zooming into, so they're all going to sort of basically, if I've emitted particles over this at the moment, they would all sort of end up just sort of accumulating in these areas. Um, so what I want to do is I want a bit of that, and I also want this, but I don't want just that, I want this sort of as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lerp, which is a linear um, interpolation type thing. So a lerp. So basically, it's like a mix. You can mix the two together. So if I now plug that one into there, plug that one into there, and now plug that into the vector field, won't get any change because we have to give it um, a fraction at the moment. So it's just zero to one. So at zero, it's all going to be the first one, and at one, it's all going to be this one. So I need to put a number in here. Um, and with fields, you need to make a, you can't just make values, you need to make a scalar field to go into scalar values. So that's, if you mouse over that, see it says requires a scalar field. So I'll put that into there. And now if I put that to one, you see we're getting all the fractal turbulence. So if I plug that in, it will be exactly the same. There we go. And if I put it to zero, we're getting all of that of the cross product. So if I put it to 0.5, we're going to get a little bit of each. 
Um, but they're now slightly moving off the surface and I still want them to keep them to the surface. So I'm going to do another bit of maths. Um, and this is pretty much following exactly what is shown here. So if you want actually to understand it a bit better from someone who knows what they're talking about, I would highly recommend you watch that. Um, so I'm going to do a project vector. So I'm going to project the... Um, I think this one onto this one. I might have to double check that. Um, so I'm just going to do a project vector. And what that does is it takes one vector and it projects it onto the other one a bit like um, sort of a shadow, as far, as far as I can understand it. So sort of that's one vector and it's being projected onto that one, so that's what you're going to get there. So this cross product here, which is the flattened one there, I'm going to project, I think my lerp on, no, am I going to project that one onto these ones? Anyway, we'll, we'll try and there and see what happens. So I think I'm going to project this one onto that one, I bet I got it wrong way around. Um, and let's just do that. Yep, so that's the wrong way around. So I want to project the cross product onto that guy, is that right? And do I want that other parallel? No, it's not that one, is it? Is that that one? Have I done that right? Right, sorry, I got confused. It's not, I'm doing it wrong. It's not the cross product that I'm supposed to be projecting onto. Uh, what I want to do is actually go back and get my gradient field here. So it's, uh, that's right, and I want to project that onto that one. There we go. So, uh, hang on. No, it's that one. My lerp. Uh, is that right? That's right. So if I maybe, and that's one. Yeah, that's basically. It, isn't it? So you can sort of fiddle around with these and they're stuck to the V. Yeah, so I could turn that up. And 10. There we go. So we're getting sort of whirling um, vectors on the surface, which I can then sort of play between with a lerp between those ones. And those ones, uh, play my ratios, make them a bit more squiggly. Um, take my number of frequencies down. Make that sort of a lot smaller, so there's sort of large wafts just wafting over it. Anyway, so that's got that right. So let's go through that again, just because. Um, I confuse myself slightly. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Right, so I'm bringing in Bifrost Graph Shape 1. I'm making a voxel field of the volume, which I'm then making a gradient field. I've made a turbulence field here, and I'm doing a cross product of these two. Um, turbulent field is the first one, gradient field is the second one, and then I'm lerping those, so sort of a blend between that and my turbulence field. And then I'm doing a project vector from projecting my my lerped vectors onto my gradient vector, and then I'm outputting the orthogonal vector of that. So we get that. Right. So that's the field made um, to sort of get the swirling sort of um, force that's attached to this character. Um, next video, I'll make the particle simulation.